So, you're writing Windows software and eventually you get one of these. This, this looks like a USB key, but it's actually a hardware code signing key. And you get it so that when somebody downloads and installs your software, instead of seeing a, a, a scary Microsoft smart screen, this file could be dangerous, do you trust it, which would stop people from installing it, they see that it, it comes from you, nobody's tampered with it, and everything is good. Now, you, you want that because a lot of people would be scared out of even trying your software otherwise. Now, the problem is when you try to integrate this into your automated build system. I have a build server that I use to for automated building and testing and for generating the final release that I, I put out onto the internet for people, for, for end users to use. What happens when you add code signing into the process is it'll build the software and then when it gets to the code signing step, it'll just stop and just hang. And the reason is when you set up the build server, now, now I use GitLab Runner because I'm using GitLab, but this, the same, I've been told it's the same problem with other systems like Jenkins. When you set it up, the, their instructions say set it up as a Windows service. And a Windows service cannot pop up a window. It does not allow to have a UI. They, Microsoft have disabled that for security reasons. Whether you agree with it or not, this is the way it works. And this thing is password protected. So when it gets to the code signing, it wants to pop up a window. However, it can't because it's a Windows service. It's not running under, under your user account. So the window has nowhere to go, has nowhere to, there's no way to display it, and the process just hangs. Now, it's really tempting to just say, okay, I'll put the password in the build script. And at this point, people will say, danger, danger, don't do that. It's a security risk. It'll end up leaking in the build log that gets uploaded to GitLab or GitHub or wherever. It's like, okay, so not supposed to do that. What do I do then? So here's the solution. Delete the Windows service that you set up for GitLab Runner or Jenkins or whatever. And instead, go to Task Scheduler, start the Task Scheduler, and set up a scheduled task for GitLab Runner to start when you log in or you create a special user account for your build server. I'm assuming, actually, I'm assuming this is a special machine set up to be build server. So you, you have a user account, a regular user account for the building. You set it up to start when that user logs in. And what that does is now, instead of running as a Windows server, it's running as a regular user. So when it gets to the code signing step, if you haven't entered the password in already, it can pop up the window saying enter your password for your code signing key. And then your code signing completes, you get your, your release, and you can upload that to, the, to your website for end users to download, and everything is good. It does have the slight downside that your build server is not completely automated anymore because if you have to restart it, then you have to log in again and you have to enter your code signing password in again. But to be honest, in, in my case, I manually trigger the final release. I don't release every, every build that I make, just, just the, the final release for every version or every revision. So I'm there to enter the password in anyway, it's, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, by the way, I'm recording this video as a reference for myself, just in case I have to set it all up again. Then uh, I can just refer back to this to know exactly what I can, what I need to do. So I hope this was helpful. Um, as I say, don't run your your build server as a Windows service. Let it run under, under a user account, and then you can access the the UI necessary to enter the password to use your code signing key.